Yeah. Okay. So this is actually what the assignment brief and welcome to the class again. It's just assignment discussion. So we want to look at uh, uh, different areas on it. So the first one is that what he said. What is the uh, what is y to the power of this? So based on like um, calculate the following. What is y to the power of this? So it means that what you have to do. You do everything I, in the brackets to the power of four, so it'd be four y plus twenty. No, it's uh, it's not that. It means that you have to actually what expand it uh, four times. You know, if you look at uh, what we did before in learning outcome one in LO one. So what we did before in LO one, you have to be able to put the two the brackets. You know, in like uh, four plate, it's like binomial expansion. So you have to be able to like uh, use binomial expansion. That is as to do with what learning at curve one. So it's not y to the four and uh, twenty. No, it has to do with what. If you go and check uh, L O one, the recordings on L O one, you will see binomial expansion there too. Is it simplify if possible this one? So that means that you have to collect like times. And actually, what is still L1? You have to call it like times and actually what they simplify it. So minus 3 plus 6x is going to be plus 3x. Then that gives you what 2x minus 1, 2x squared plus, sorry, plus 3x minus 2. Then that one will now be what will now be factorized. So if you want the LCM of that, that also is in uh, L01. Determine. If uh, a minus one is a solution of this, so in this case now you have to you have to solve it. You have to solve it. You have to like, put what substitute uh, what is it called um, a equals to minus one there, and you will see maybe the two equations that are equal to each other they're going to be the same. So I don't want to give the answers for that. You can go and you know look at that. So this. Also, part of um, the LO1 solving simultaneous equation using graphs. So, in, in this question three, what you have to do is that you have to draw a graph of x plus y equals to five. And you also draw a graph of uh, y equals to x plus one. Where the graph meets, I repeat, where the graph meets, that is the solution for that question. So the uh, yeah, so this this other one too using graphs to question four, you have to plot the equation plot the graph for y equals to x squared, and also plot the graph for y equals to x plus two. The one that y equals to x squared is going to be like a quadratic, and the one that is y equals to x plus two, that one is going to be like a linear graph. So where the two? So in this case. This graph will have two solutions because uh, this graph will have two solutions because it's going to actually what cut across it twice. So it's going to actually what have two solutions. So don't forget, question three, we have one solution, you no, know, one value for x and one value for y. Y question four, we have two solutions, two values for x. And two values for y. So this that that's all in what learning outcome one. So if you want me, if you want me to give you feedback on your assignments before submission, you can actually what uh, get across to me. So mm -hmm. calculate the following two: the coordinate of uh, two points. The coordinate of two points is this: was the equation what perpendicular to it? So, uh, what's it called? That is uh, in LO2. That is actually what in uh, LO2. So, you must be able to actually what? Uh, you must be able to find the gradient of A and B. And when you say a perpendicular bisector, that means that uh, the line is going to pass through it in the middle. So, you must also be able to find the midpoint between A and B before you can actually what solve for that uh, equation. So can you just move up slightly? Move down slightly. So that's, uh, move down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go to five, start for five, yeah. So, and uh, 
for B2, you can see clearly there that uh, you have to what? You have to, is that line Y equals to 2X minus 3 meets the exercise at point P and the line 3 plus 3Y plus 4X equals to 8 meets at the exercise at point Q. The two lines intersect at R. Find coordinates for R. So when you say they intersect at R, it means that uh, they are meeting at R. So what you have to do basically is that uh, you have to equate the two of them together. You have to equate the two of them together. So for example, now, let me just give you an example. In the in question, uh, in, uh, let me just, uh, can you just move up so I can show you what I mean? Move up slightly. Uh, yeah, thank you. So, uh, come on, I'm going to write here. So for as well now, this one is this is what I mean by y plus um, five, y plus five. When you expand it, then you know you know what y plus five. You want to do it that one and then y plus five. You know, or you can you know you can expand it. You know that is um you can also do that one through binomial word expansion. You know, using the Pascal triangle. So this one too, you have to factorize. Um, LCM of that. So this, you have four a minus a squared plus eleven equals to minus two minus two a. So you have to test it. Maybe minus one is the solution. So if you substitute so minus one in here, you put minus one two in here. You want to see maybe the global ratio will be equal to each other. So look at this one now. Solve what graph? So when you plot a graph like this, you plot maybe y, uh, x plus y, x plus y is equal to five. Maybe it's like this, x plus y equals to five. So, and this one is, uh, the other one is uh, x plus one. X plus one equals to this state. So let me just put if this if this one is like x plus one equals to five, and the other one is like this. So where they meet, I'll give you an example. Where they meet, actually, that's gonna be the solution. So this one too, you know, it a, a, a curve like this, you know, it's gonna be like a cup. So it's gonna be this, then a straight line, the straight line. We cut across it. The straight line. The straight line, we cut across it. So these two points like this, they are going to be the solution. So I told you too about uh, the next one that uh, you know the five ones the coordinates of the two points this so you have to find the gradient of a and b you find the gradient of a gradient of b so when you find that it bisects perpendicularly in the midpoint so they from there, you can be able to find out the equation of this. Don't forget that uh, the relationship between is uh, between what is it called between um, perpendicular lines is good what the gradients they are negative reciprocal of each other. The gradients are actually what negative reciprocal of each other. So this one too, you know, you have to equate to each other. Then you find the coordinates for what of y, and we will find the value of y and the value of x. So, to find the coordinate of the vertical triangle of this, if they move five units up this time. So, this one is like on a graph. You see exactly, you plot the graph, the, what's it called, the triangle on the graph first. Then you now check the movements, how they actually want to move um, up and, uh, and down. So, to make your work neater, you might probably need to use graph on that. Maybe you do it manually, you now scan it. You know, it's kind and attack it to your to your work. Or 
if you have um, what's it called, a software that is uh, this thing, like a graph, no, like you have like a graph sheet online, it's a soft copy, that actually was just, you know, you can plot it there and send it directly. So, sorry, can you move up? Move down, sorry, move down. Yes, so, so for questions for seven, let's sketch the graph. Sketch the graph on the or for this. So these are like functions of the following. So when you say a equals to three, so it's like this one is like uh, exponential graphs. So it's like exponential graph. So just put that uh, you know, when a equals three, that means that uh, f of x. So it's good. this one is good. What f of x equals to three x. So that means that if you want to do the graph for that. You must draw a table like this. And this is uh, X, this is Y. So one, two, three, four, maybe five. So you know, when you say three to the power of one is three, three to the power of two is nine, three to the power of three is 27, three to the power of four is 81, three to the, what's three to the power of five? You put that one there to three to the power of uh, five. Three to the power of five is two, is two, four, two, four, three. So I think uh, you might not need to do this one with it. I think uh, the values for this one is fine. So just plot this X against Y, you know, that's going to be easy. Then um, you know, you do this one too. You plot this for all of them. So is that on the same axis? So don't forget to do it on the same one on the same axis. So it's not as if you have to do a different graph for A, a different graph for B, different graph for C or D or E. You have to make sure that you would have on the same uh, graph so that uh, you have to label it so that uh, the area can know exactly which graph is which. So you have to be able to actually label it very well. So for example, now, how do you label it? Let me just say, so if you plot the graph like this, and the first one is like this, you just label it to be what? Okay, this one is what? Y equals to three to the power of X. Maybe the second one is, uh, the second one is this. You have to label it Y equals to six X to the power, you know? You label it that way, in the way that, uh, they actually understand in a neat way so that um, you know it won't be hard for the markers to actually see. So another one is the, the sketch the graph of um, sketch the graph of the function of these logs. So the same thing I'm being able to you have to put a uh, you know log three when x goes to one when x goes to two the same thing you plot it to so when n equals to one, when s equals to one, when s equals to two, when s equals to three, you do that one, then you plot doing this for the same thing applicable here too. So the sector of a circle obviously that is find the length of the arc, this is one. So this is like another linear outcome. You must say sector at the center C, find the area of the sector on the arc length to one decimal place. So uh, can you move up? Move down, sorry, then slightly. I move down slightly, please. I move down. Is it is the final one? I move down. Ian? Yeah, hello, sorry. You, sorry. you can move down, sorry. I can't. Wait, one minute. It's cutting out. Okay, can you move down? Uh, yeah, 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 one minute, sorry. Yeah, down again. Yeah, Keep down. going. Yeah, down, yeah. Yeah, so that's it. So, okay. So, look at this one. find out the area of the sector. So, the area of the sector is saying, you know, so do you about that? That's going to be like, uh, that's going to be the formula for area of sector is this the angle divided by 360 times pi times radius squared. So, you actually would apply that one there. So, you say a tree is tall and it's going to find the angle of elevation. So when you say the angle of elevation, you know, you say it's, uh, it's this thing tall and the and cast the shadow of this thing long. So it's 50 tall 
Mm. Uh, and, and it's worth 60. Yeah. So the angle of valuation is going to be this place. So you have to use cost, you have to use uh, trigonometry for that. So that gives you, you know, you can see that uh, it's going to be opposite and what, and it gets sense. So you write everything down. This is so, this is car, and that is actually what uh, tour. So which one combines the opposites and it gets them together? Though that is going to be, you know, the last one. So you just want to actually what, find out your grade So Sorry, find out your angle of elevation. That uh, this determines the velocity of this. So when you say velocity of this one, it means that uh, velocity is what is change in displacement per time. So that means you have to differentiate it. When I told you about, I told you in the previous recording too, if you have something like, uh, you know, like 4x squared, if you differentiate it, that gives you what? 8t, 8x squared, sorry, 8x. So because you need to multiply this, then um, you take away one from that. So that gives you what? Uh, 8x. So mm -hmm. you do it, you differentiate everything for this one. That gives you what? That gives you the, the velocity. So the anti current to uh, is given the voltage of this. Find the RMS yeah, directly of that. So this one too, you know, is uh, is the final linear output. So that one is actually what final learning outcome for the whole thing. So, so when you the, when you say that the you know the uh, what's it called the peak voltage the RMS is also what one over root two times the the, the, the voltage one over root two times actually what times the voltage. So and um, so and you. You've already like seen the footage there. So that's what you said given that as well, when it becomes the maximum. So it's one over root two times times uh what's it called? It's one over root two times uh uh times voltage. Well, if I look at this voltage, so you have to actually apply that one. Like I told you earlier, I'll be I'll be open to I, should, I, I will be open to any what's it called, to any feedback that you actually want, want you to actually want attempt to. So it's uh, you know just um, just do one over two times big big weight take that which is actually what uh, giving for you. So yeah, yeah. So that one is like big voltage. Then um, the other one too, you can see. Sorry. So the frequency too, you can see the frequency too. Mm. Frequency goes to what? Uh, so frequency goes to mu of um, 2 pi. That's it. Then the final one is the uh, instantaneous value of the voltage when t is uh, 40 milliseconds. So, so this t, you put the value of t there, can you see? So. Yeah. Uh, Millis across is going to be what divided by what by a thousand because uh, milli is like divided by a thousand and then the real value. So that is that. So it's just um, it's very important to you know it and um, so that uh, you know and anyone that has, that wants to listen to the recording too, if you have any question, just let me know. I'm able to actually attend to it. So any question from you? Uh, no. Okay. So have you are you done with the other? Uh, yeah. So, uh, do you think that you have to show before before you submit, or you think that you're going to submit straight away? Uh, yeah, I just need to do the last couple questions, and then mm -hmm. would it be okay if I sent it you tomorrow morning? Yeah, you can say send to me tomorrow morning. I'll be I'll be glad to actually what uh, to attend to that. So, uh, you can just make me back the host. And uh, just click on my click on Twitter and make me use. Okay, thank you. All right. So, um, so I think that is that. So it's a very twenty minutes, thirty minutes recording, not uh, not that long. So just uh, look at the recordings again, see any feedback that you will take, any mistake you have made that you think that you have to correct. Because I think that the first question you made a mistake there because I see why power four, which is not the same. 
you have to expand it using binoma. Or if you're not confident with binoma, you can just use uh, what's it called? You can just use normal quadratic uh, exposure. Thank you, guys. So, all right. Uh, thank you. I see you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Bye. you. In a bit. Bye. Bye. Just press.